So the first thing we need to do is tell uh, Karumba where the geometry is supported. In this case, uh, we're just going to take the base of the geometry and say that those points are fixed in space. This is like typical for a building. You say the foundation um, is engineered to where those points will never move, but I want to know what happens to the rest of the building as it goes up. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is we need to somehow, within Grasshopper, specify those lowest points. Okay? And what's nice about um, Karumba is that you don't have to get into this assembly and specify those points. As long as you have those points and their coordinates match up with the nodes that uh, Karumba has found, um, it will cross-correlate those points and it will assign those points to the supports. Okay, so what we want is all the points in our um, structural assembly. And those are being output from this line to beam function. So we have 450 points. And we just want to use Grasshopper to figure out which of those points are at the base of our model. So what I'm going to do is use the deconstruct point node. So here's deconstruct. And this will take all the points and give me the x, y, and z coordinates of those points. I'm going to pass in all my points here. And then the way I'm going to know if points are at the base is if their z coordinate is below some very small number. Okay, So I'm going to basically create a component smaller than. So I can just type in the smaller than symbol. This is like the left angle bracket. And then I'm, I'm going to create a slider with some very small number, say 0 0.01. Set that as the operator and plug in the z values here. This will be true whenever the z value of any of these points is below this very small number. So I'm going to use a component called call pattern. I'm going to use this to basically take only those values from that list of points which meet this condition. So it's going to, I'm going to plug in my list of points into the list input and into my pattern. I'm going to plug in what I got out of the smaller than component. This is basically going to take this list of points and only return those points where this is true. Okay, so now if we go through and hide some of our other geometry, we can see that it's given us just those points. And you can imagine if we set this to a higher number, um, you know, it's going to just basically give us all the points below a certain value. So we're just going to use that to get the lowest points. All right, so now we have these points, and these are the points we want to use as our support points. And again, even though um, these points are just defined within Grasshopper, if we feed them into Karamba, it's going to be smart enough to reference those points within the structural model. Okay, so now we want to use these points to specify the supports within our model. And there's another uh, intermediate step where we have to uh, create uh, a support node. So again, in Ensemble, we have the support node. And the support node will basically take in any IDs. And these IDs can be references to the assembly, or it can just be points from uh, Grasshopper. Okay, so we have these points, we're going to pass those into the position ID. Plane we can keep as default, it's the XY plane. And then this is going to specify what kind of supports they are. So if you remember back to structure uh, class, um, each support can have uh, restraints on its translation and on its rotation. Um, so if you're spe specifying a specific kind of structure where you have some points that are moment uh, supports or some that are in connections, uh, you can specify these. But to start off with, we're just going to check all these off. So each one of these points that we pass are going to be restrained both in translation, so they're not going to be able to move, and in rotation, so they're not going to be able to rotate. Okay, and uh, now that we've specified the supports, we can put those into our model. And now this assembly is going to be uh, supported at those locations. All right, and then once we have the supports, the last thing we need uh, for our analysis to work is a loading condition. And for the load, the simplest load we can specify is the gravity load. And this will basically take all the elements in our model and apply gravity to them. Um, and that will be our, uh, the load that it calculates. So just to start off with, we're going to go to loads, 
bring out one of these gravity loads. And uh, this will allow us to specify the vector of the gravity force. So by default, it will be negative one in the z. And then a number for the load case. So this is how Corumbo will reference the load within our analysis. So we're just gonna, once we have that, uh, we don't have to change anything to start. We're just gonna plug that load into our assembly. Okay, so that's a basic structural setup. And now we can do our um, calculation. You don't have any visualization yet of the analysis because no analysis has been run. We just have our assembly for the Karamba to work with. So once we have that assembly, uh, we can go to um, the algorithms tab under Karamba and go to this analyze node. And this analyze will actually conduct or perform our structural analysis. And we'll just take the model from our assembly and plug it into the model input of the analyze node. Now this has performed our analysis. It's giving us some uh, feedback already from the analysis. For instance, it's giving us the displacement. This is the maximum displacement to the model. It's also giving us the model. And this model now as it's passed through analysis will be the model after the analysis has been performed. And this model will allow us to visualize those results. So to actually visualize them, we need to create um, one of the result nodes. So under the results tab, we have this model view node. Okay, so if we create one of those, this will again take a model as an input, and now we'll plug in our analyze model. And this will actually visualize um, our, the results of our analysis. Okay, so you can see that this uh, model view, if you hide everything else, and just preview this model view, it's letting us display a lot of the um, results of this analysis. So it's giving us a preview of the line elements as thin lines. Um, it's also giving us a preview of the supports. So you can change the scales here. You can see that these are our supporter points. And the icons mean that they're restricted, translation and rotation. We can also specify the load case here. Um, we only have one load case, load case zero. This is our gravity load. And we can also visualize our deformation of our structure by uh, changing the deformation value. So here it will give us an exaggerated deformation based on our load. You see it's not that much right now because our load is not very strong. Just for demonstration purposes, we're just gonna increase this gravity load. I'm gonna create a unit Z vector. Plug that in here. And this will allow me to set the strength of that load in the Z direction. So I'm just gonna create a slider. And I'm going to give it a really low value, say negative 100. And now we have a lot more load applied. And you can see the resulting deformation is a lot stronger. This preview will actually let you see how the structure deforms under a given load. So what you see here is that our support points have stayed put, and then the rest of our structure is deforming. OK, so that will allow us to preview the deformation in our model. You can see it outputs a, a new set of, uh, it creates a new set of outputs. So it'll give you the deformed uh, curves from our model. So you can actually output these to curve objects within Grasshopper. This will just be curve geometry. Uh, it'll also output a new model. And this model we can pass to further nodes. So for instance, now if we want to visualize the actual forces on our members, we can create a uh, beam view node. So before we're using model view, that will, that will maintain like the line preview. If we want to preview the act, what's happening at the actual member level, we can use beam view. We drag one of these nodes out and then daisy chain the model after the model view into this. This will pass the deformed model, which will be specified by our deformation into the beam view. And this node will actually preview what's happening to the elements themselves. You can see here that the elements have obtained some thickness. This thickness is set by the cross-section specification that we use in our assembly. So if these are not the size you were thinking, you can actually make these fatter or thinner. And it's gonna start previewing our results and working with the geometry at the mesh level. Okay, so here you can see that the new outputs has meshes. So this will be the actual 
representation of the elements as thick members. And here's where we can start to preview the actual forces and displacements happening in our model. If we go down to render settings, uh, we can select how we want to preview these members. Cross section is default, it'll just give you a, a basic mesh at the thickness of the element. We can also preview displacement. So actually color the geometry based on how far it's moved from its original point. We can preview the stresses in the model, and this will give you actual feedback about where the most compressive and tensile stresses are. This is the kind of uh, um, graphic output of the analysis, but you have actual access to all the results in numerical form too. So if you want to use this as a basis for optimization or you want actual feedback about what the stresses are, if you have some kind of maximum stress in your material, you can get a lot of those information straight from here. So if you're interested in the displacements, so this is how far um, a piece of geometry has moved from its original position. This is like a common way to talk about structural performance. Um, those numbers will come out of uh, this displacement node. So see here, it's this, the maximum displacement of any of the nodes is 0.18. And again, these units will be in millimeters, but you have to make sure that all of your model is set up correctly uh, for that to be usable. You can also get access to the actual uh, stress numbers by creating another analysis node. This is called uh, resultant sectional forces. So this will basically uh, analyze all the forces in each element. So if we plug in our analyzed model here, so from our analysis, this will give you all the information about all of the forces in your model. So you have to really know what you're after to make this make sense. Um, these are the normal forces, the moment forces, and the shear forces. But if you don't know all the kind of structural definitions of all the different types of forces, you can still just use this setup to get a visual feedback about where the most stress and where the most um, displacement is happening in your model.